Today we'll be breaking down wine pairings for six dishes in a seafood restaurant from oysters to tomato fish soup in order to know which of them were perfect and which probably not. My name is Gary and I'm a WSET3 qualified sommelier. Let's go for it. As the first appetizer, we went for oysters this time. Fresh just from the aquarium, they were stunning on a classic crushed ice plate with some lemon and vinegar. Pure sea protein with a characteristic metallic hint in the aftertaste, which makes it a bit tricky to pair with wine. To me, the most iconic pairing for oysters is French white wines from the Loire Valley, like Muscadet, for instance. It is very subtle yet refreshing enough to take away this metallic aftertaste and clean the palate for the next bite. But this time I wanted to try something a bit different. The restaurant Sameli advised me to give a try to a Spanish Albarino wine. It is a light white wine from Rias Baixas region in the north of Spain. The climate here is not too hot, so the wine is very fresh and acidic. And for me, it was a stunning pairing for fresh oysters. Oysters are just too good themselves, so it's almost impossible to pair it with the wrong wine. Basically, any light young white wine pairs extremely well with oysters. Probably bold red wines are not the best option for oysters because they give it even more this metallic aftertaste but almost any young white wine serves perfectly well. The second appetizer was salmon tartare. To me, a fish tartare is the most explicit way to show the quality of the fish. If the fish is just a bit not fresh and has some fault, it will be clearly visible, probably better say tasteable on the palate. So in my opinion, the best pairing for a fish tartare would be a white wine. Probably we can add a bit of complexity to it, not like with oysters when we try to preserve as much natural oyster taste as possible. The wine may be just a bit oaked, like an oak chardonnay for instance, to cut through the salmon fat, but again, Generally, any white wine pairs extremely well with it. This time it was a Sancerre from Sauvignon Blanc, but it could be New Zealand Sauvignon or any other aromatic variety wine. Yeah, I think Sauvignon Blanc did a very good job with this tartare. It didn't overwhelm the dish, but still made a very good pairing. The next appetizer was bruschetta with some avocado, cream cheese and eel. This one was way stronger than the juice of the ocean, the oysters or even the salmon tartare, so the sommelier recommended some more full-bodied white wine for this course, and I didn't protest. He offered some gavi from Corteza grapes, and I must say that it was a nice one as well. Gavi is a very food-friendly wine. I mean that it pairs well with almost any food. It can go well with seafood risotto, some salad, any vegetarian dish as well, so it's a very gastronomic wine. This one was not a very expensive Gavi, not even Gavi di Gavi, like the wine from the grapes of the most classic area of production, but it was very good with yield. Probably I would pair yield with something more oaky and buttery because yield has a lot of natural fat to it. But again, Gavi is a very gastro-friendly wine, so no complaints about this pairing. The next one up was a tomato seafood soup. I see your question right now, did you eat it all alone? And no, I wouldn't be able to do it, so my wife ordered some of these dishes. What would you like to eat a tomato seafood soup with? We decided to go for sherry fino this time. Yes, I know it sounds quite unconventional, but generally dry sherry wine pairs very well with soups, some broths, some clear soups, and tomato flavor is not an obstacle for it. Sherry wine is a bit specific. There are people who love it and there are people who hate it. I think that if the sherry is paired well, it is a very nice wine. For some people, it is not very pleasant to drink sherry on its own without any food at all, but I think it is especially good as an aperitif to kick off the evening or even some sweet sherry as a digestive after the dinner to help digest the food. Anyway, a copita of fino sherry with tomato seafood soup was quite nice, I think. If you want some more conventional pairing for this dish, I would suggest something like a good quality Pinot Gris from Alsace or even a Rosé wine from the south of France, which has a bit of residual sugar to cope with this tomato's natural sweetness. But Sherry Fino 
was very good to me. For some, it may be a little bit over the top, but, but yeah, you just have to try it. The next one up was fried scallops with asparagus and white mushroom cream. Quite a big dish full of flavors, although scallops have a very tender taste, the whole dish was quite big because of the mushrooms. The most obvious, simple and at the same time brilliant pairing for me would be some burgundy chardonnay, but the sommelier of the restaurant shown some creative approach and paired it also with a Chardonnay, but a Chardonnay from Argentina, Mendoza. Mendoza is a region situated rather high in the mountains for vine growing, so the grapes benefit from more diurnal range, meaning that they accumulate sugars from the sun by the day, but rest from sunburn during the night, which helps to accumulate more flavors for the resulting wine. A high altitude Chardonnay worked really well, balancing out subtle scallops with grassy mushroom sauce. It was definitely a nice one. I absolutely love wines from higher altitudes because they are so much brighter on the flavors than wines from flat plots of land on the sea level. The wines from the New World, especially from Argentina, Uruguay, sometimes are considered to be just plonk wines for 5 to 10 euros per bottle, but actually there are a lot of exceptional wines from South America. This Argentinian Chardonnay was not a very cheap one. In retail it costs about 40 euros, I believe, which is more or less a middle price point, and to me it delivers great value for the money. The sixth dish was pasta with Argentinian shrimp. It is a very basic course, simple yet brilliant, very natural, and the sommelier suggested to have at least one red wine for this one. Because you know, white wine for fish is an unbreakable rule that works in 98% of the cases, but sometimes you just want to go a little bit further and experiment a bit. Our experiment was South African Pinotage for pasta with Argentinian shrimp. Basically, Pinotage grape is a crossing of Pinot Noir and Sun Soap. It has a bit more strength than the original Pinot Noir and some more straight character because of the South African climate, but still it is not like Cabernet Sauvignon or even Shiraz. In the majority of the cases, it is not very big, bulky wine. To me, Pinotage seems a bit more like a rustic Pinot Noir, some heavier Pinot Noir, so it pairs extremely well with fatty pasta and fried shrimp. By the way, I tasted no residual sugar in this Pinotage because very often the New World wines have a bit of this residual sugar that kinda adds to the aftertaste, makes it a bit longer, but actually it makes no good to the quality of the wine. This time the wine had no residual sugar, which I really appreciate a lot in the wines of the new world. And yeah, what's the overall impression on the meal, you'd ask me? To me, it was stunning yet a bit innovative. The majority of the pairings like Gavi or Albarino were time-proven and really can be named classics of food and wine pairing. Others, like sherry for a tomato fish soup or pinotage, were a bit more unconventional, but still absolutely worth the try. Nice swap with the Argentinian Chardonnay as well. I definitely have to discover more wines from this country because I really enjoyed the quality of the Mendoza Chardonnay and the whole pairing as well. Write in the comments down below what's your favorite wine to pair with seafood, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.